Okay, welcome everyone to the 18th Verzio International Human Rights Documentary Film Festival. My name is Lili Mesterházy, and my guest uh, today here is Tuja Haltunen, Finnish documentary filmmaker who has worked in the film industry for over 20 years. Her documentary Neighbors was nominated for Prix Europa in 2013. And her documentary State of Mind got a Statue Quality Award in 2007. Uh, her short documentary Heaven and Earth won the main prize in Tampere Film Festival in 1995. From 2010 to 2015, she worked as a regional artist in the Arts Promotion Center Finland. And we're talking today because her latest work is the documentary How to Kill a Cloud. And it's being screened at Verzio. And can I ask you first, uh, Tuya, can you add one piece of information that was not mentioned about you, but you think is important? <laughs> well, what a difficult question. I oh, well, I I, can't, I cannot. Well, I worked a lot in films since I graduated. I'm a bit late bloomer. I started. Um, I was already in my thirties when I started my film studies. Uh, um, so, and I work in very low pace. So. But yeah, I don't know what to say. I've also also done some fiction in my youth, so. <laughs> but then I turned into documentaries. I fell in love with them. How? What turned you towards documentaries? Uh, I think it was kind of an accident, because when I did my kind of final work in the film school, it was a short documentary. Uh, and I did it because... Uh, my father was very seriously ill, and I wanted just to record the, his kind of... A, last days and uh, that film uh, won quite a few prizes and then um, I got an um, invitation from YLE which is a national tv channel here and broadcaster in Finland and they asked me to join them and do their, their uh, series of uh, short, uh, short documentaries or television documentaries and uh, I had just um, at the same time, actually, I wrote a fiction fiction series, a comedy series, and uh, uh, and I did both of them uh, at the same time. Then after the school, and just for some reason, I when I went into that world of, I, I I always thought I would be a fiction filmmaker, but uh, when I started to make those documentaries, I just um, fell in love because they are so unpredictable. It's like improvising with camera. You never know what happens, even if you plan it in advance. And uh, so often real life is much more um, interesting and um, surprising than you ever can imagine. So I just, uh, I just can't leave it. <laughs> <laughs> when, when it comes to your uh, documentaries, what do you think, where does your sensibility lie? What are the subjects that talk to you? But if, if you look at them as in a row, is there something that unites them? Yes, I've, I've been trying to think about it. I think, um, I think I kind of, um, it, it's, it's very, it's easier when you, when you look back to your works and then you kind of try to find a, a thread there, a thin red line somewhere there that combines all the documentaries. And I think I'm fascinated about power in, in a sense, what power does in uh, individual, individuals or, uh, so even if it's countries or something like that and human choices. So in your documentary, How to Kill a Cloud, you follow uh, this research scientist, this Finnish woman, uh, Hanele Korhonen, I don't know how to pronounce that, but I hope it, it, it nears it, um, over the span of three years. And, and there is this remarkable achievement in the beginning of the film, this huge amount of money. She receives $1.5 million from the United Arab Emirates to make rain, basically, to go to the desert and do something about this uh, uh, painful lack of rain. 
uh, in your documentary, we can hear the, the clips or the radio or the sound of reporters reporting on this. Was this a big thing back then in Finland? Yes, it was. It was it's, it's got quite a big uh, news coverage. There were, and at first I actually heard about this research in, in news. So yeah, there were quite a big news about it, yes. So you heard when it? When she got the money. He, she heard her you heard her name and you decided to reach out to her to make this yeah. movie mm, uh, yeah uh, if you're asking me how the mo movie got started it was uh, <clears throat> that over a decade, about 15 years ago already i read a book about clouds i just was in the meeting in our capital and i was running to a train and i tried to find something to read and from the discount laura i just grabbed a book and it happened to be a book about clouds, and I, I I couldn't stop reading it. Reading it, I just loved it, and I fell in love with clouds. And I thought, well, I want to do something about clouds. But then uh, it was very hard to find the POV or the angle to the film. Uh, as I told you, there always has to be a kind of a person or choices or power or something like that, and it was a bit too am am ambiguous for me. Uh, so I kind of forgot it for years, but then one morning I was like lying in bed and uh, <laughs> laying in bed and I heard about the, the news about Hanele Koron and getting the money. And I immediately um, uh, contacted her and I met the next day and she said, yes, it's fine if the UAE funder says it's fine. So yeah, she agreed to be in the film. So that is the beginning of the journey. This is fascinating because she seems to be a very private person. Is it mm -hmm. just me? Uh, or, or when you met her, did, did it take, so it did not take long uh, for her to say yes? Uh, no, we went to a coffee and yes, yeah, she is a very private person, even for a Finn, because we are very private here in Finland. But even uh, for a Finn, she is, uh, in a sense, uh, I don't remember how long we chatted, but uh, she was um, pro the documentary, making the documentary, but she set some uh, limits. And one of them was uh, the UAE funder that they have to be in the film and uh, give their agreement, with, which is of course uh, obvious. And then she said that uh, uh, I cannot film her private life which was okay for me because I wasn't making a film about her kitchen life or anything like that, but uh, uh, her as a professional woman doing her work. So there were her limits. And when we agreed on that, she said yes. She trusted you on this. To, yeah. To do that. When uh, you, you first met her, your first impression was of her? Uh, that, like, could, did, did you mm -hmm. think she was to make a great central character? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what was that? Yeah, what I remember that? because she is very reserved. I had uh, some questions in my mind if she works as a character, because of course we are used to, uh, in, um, in order to get the audience attachment to the main character, of course she has to, or he has to show her his feelings and emotions so we can kind of attach there. And uh, because she is quite uh, private and reserved, I was a bit worried that uh, if she works as a main character. So we did some um, uh, shootings in advance. Also, we had to kind of... Um, um, oh, sorry, I haven't, speak, I haven't spoken English for a while, so I lost, lose words. But we also had to give um, footage to our founder to per se, to, and to, to, so that they believe in us. So we did some shootings and when I when we did it and I, sh I, sh I saw that her face is very expressive, uh, her impressions on her face tell more than anything else in her. So then I, uh, I believe that she could make a central character. Yeah, yes, and I can is. make the film. This is one of this was one of my observations that your camera lingers on her face for quite some time and and as if 
you wanted to show us this inner turmoil that she doesn't want to show sometimes mm -hmm. she's kind of trying to repress it but your your camera shows it all it's, mm -hmm. it's very powerful uh did you when you were shooting the movie did you talk to her about did you have conversations about her doubts or moral mm -hmm. dilemmas mm -hmm. or the question marks that that can be seen on her face yeah 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 we did talk about it a lot and uh even in the first meeting i said that this is not going to be a science film so when i introduced the film to her i said uh, in the beginning in the first question or early in the beginning i was thinking like uh, uh also I want to make an angle about uh, humans playing as car guards and so on, and and also the ethics. When we moved on, I found out the ethics more interesting, as it often happens when you make a documentary. You kind of uh, find the story there, essence of the story, and we did talk about it a lot. And she said, "There's no problem about talking about the ethics." She just doesn't want to talk about her private life. <laughs> but, that that uh, was the main point for her. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, she's a very, very intelligent and clever woman. And uh, I think many times uh, I, I was very open to her because um, she knew in advance what I was looking. When we were putting a camera somewhere, she said, OK, I know you are looking for this and this and you want to have this and this. And I was so there was no <laughs> busted <laughs> I, <laughs> so there were there were no tricks on her because she's very very clever so um, yeah and we talked a lot yeah in the beginning the very beginning you show this uh, line from faust mm -hmm. uh, by goethe cursed be at once the high ambition mm -hmm. do you think or isn't there a hint there should should hanela's high ambition be cursed or is Hannele cursed about her? High By ambition? her high ambition? <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. I think we all are. And uh, in a sense, this uh, ambition and um, its um, two sides, the sides that makes us make uh, great things and the other side that may destroy us is for every one of us to... Um, face in our lives and it is for her as well and for me this is a uh, this is a story about ethics of science about uh, but most mostly for me this is a story about um, ambition in a sense that we make choices all the time and i have to tell you that when we were making the film the uh, the further we went I understood that this is also kind of a meta film of filmmaking and myself. When you have to kind of face your, uh, you want the fame, you want the film to success, you want your study to be uh, important, you want to be, want to be important. And you have to face the um, ethics of your actions every day and what choices you make and so on and so forth. So uh, yeah, I think we all are not only Hannele, but uh, all individuals and also all countries which have to kind of uh, live with this uh, ambition. And it's not only a bad thing because it causes many splendid inventions and everything, but uh, we have to be cautious. Goethe wasn't a stupid man. <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. But yes, uh, when, when you, it's, it's interesting also to see her in her uh, natural in habitat, the other researchers uh, being the only woman. Well, there is mm. the other woman in the in the picture, but there is much less focus on her. The from the United Arab Emirates, uh, Alia, I think her name was. Alia. Uh, yeah. uh, yes. Uh, so, so we see her, and it seems to be that the others around her, the men, seem to be very sure about this ambition and the ethics of the whole mm. thing, especially the German. Uh, professor uh, around her and she seems to be the only one to have doubts or 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 do you think this this was the case or it's just it just happened or is this nothing gender specific about that uh i um i wouldn't i wouldn't like to put it on gender because i think also women can shut their eyes but it happened to be that in the high level of physics, there are very few women there working and Hannele happened to be the only woman. 
but uh, in the in the in that interpretation about uh, uh, many others versus Hannele and her doubts, uh, of course, I cannot say about the males, the men, because we weren't following them so closely. But what it looked to me like, this is my uh, interpretation about the situation. This is my film. This is my point of view. For me, it appeared like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the male, uh, male uh, colleagues around her were quite sure what they were doing and um, what the benefit was to them. But uh, I think... Or at least active, wasn't that... acted like it. Yes. Yeah. 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 But yeah. for Hanale, it was not that easy. Yeah, no, for, was, uh, as, as it, at least I think so. We, yeah, it's my, you know, it's my look on her. The eye of the beholder. <laughs> yeah. Yes. When you, uh, like, th there's this sentence by Hanele, which I, I, I love so much, and it was so poetic. And I actually researched it, like Google and everything, because I, I thought maybe it's a Finnish saying or something. But she said something like, um, Hope makes you deaf to doubts. Do you remember it? Yeah. It's, it's, I remember. It, it wasn't Hannele, it was me. Okay, now, great. Okay, so we've come to my, one of the most important questions that, yeah. that uh, arose in me. It's the narrator. Yeah. And Hannele, is it yeah. you, the narrator, who yeah. writes those lines? What yeah. is happening there? Because it's not clear. Okay. And it's two women's voices. Yeah. Okay. It's hard to distinguish somehow. Oh, okay. Sometimes yeah. it's like a radio play in a way because we never yeah. see your face saying those yeah, words. Yeah, true. So I'm true. so I'm so happy we've come to this uh, uh, realization because I wanted to ask you exactly this. Yeah. Uh, because it seems like there are in a way like you have those lines, the narration as a way of balancing whatever she's doing. It's like kind of bouncing your ideas on her surface. Mm -hmm. What was it like for you? Like, I don't know, create, create yeah. creatively? Yeah, this is the first time I ever used narrator. It was very um, hard task for me. And I uh, appreciate a lot of people who write them and who do them because it's not easy. I struggled a lot with it. Um, it's kind of traditional. Narration. I wouldn't yeah, call I know. it generation. Yeah, either. I know. I know because I didn't want that. I abandoned the idea at one point and we edited the, it uh, without the narrator. But then I felt that I have to bring out, because for me personally, the level, the film has very many levels, but the level of the clouds, and I, um, before the film school, I studied philosophy, so I'm a, you know, I'm just a, that kind of person. So it, it so. makes perfect sense now. I get it. <laughs> yeah. So I, um, and it was a painful job to write the narrator because I wanted to be a, a philosophical, poetical, and also on the level of some kind of, you know, timeless to show the, because for me, the clouds represent um, something beyond our daily life, something very great, great. They have been there for billions of years and they continue after we die and after the human race dies, they will be there if we, if we don't <laughs> destroy the whole Hopefully. planet, <laughs> which is also a possibility, I'm sorry. But anyway, so yeah, it was very important and, and I kind of felt that um, uh, if I went into the shoes of clouds, they would kind of bounce those humans and ask and challenge their views. So you and, gave a voice to clouds, basically? Uh, yeah, kind of, yeah. Yeah, of course it's my voice, but uh, kind of, yeah. I, I tried to make it so, yeah. It's so, also so interesting uh, that you didn't hire an actress for that. Yeah. You I, your own voice, like you, you stand behind that. Very yeah, hard. yeah, well, that was also a, a journey because I, I really wanted to, um, hire an act actress there, and I, I was sure it has to be a woman because Morgan Freeman. <laughs> no, no, Morgan Freeman. Well, it's a funny story that uh, my producer in the beginning, the first beginning of the, when I called her about this idea, she said to me, "Yes, and the, it's gonna have a narrator like Morgan Freeman." <laughs> of course, 
sitting <laughs> sitting on a cloud. <laughs> but then, no, I wanted a female, and uh, I kind of uh, struggled a lot with the the idea of hiring a uh, professional actress because this was very hard for me. I'm not. Um, I've never done anything like this. So anyway. But then I, I worked. I I I managed to get a very very uh, uh, special sound designer and um, compo- composer from Denmark, Christian Edne Selin Andersen, who has worked a lot with um, Lars von Trier, almost in all his films. And he's very good. He's, um, it was absolutely fabulous to work with him. And at one point, he said to me that now you quit this shit and you do the boys do you you have because we had to do it kind of the you know the demo in in the the temp voice in the editing room at first it was me then i i got so tired of listening my own voice that we changed it to our producer and then we went back to my voice because my pace was different and and then uh then he said to me because he had heard the temp temp narrator that you just have to do with and he's He's so big star that <laughs> Christian is so big and he has he he has so when when he said that you, you have to do it, I thought, okay, I will do it. Then. You do it, whatever he <laughs> says. Yeah. yeah. It was fun, although very difficult because I'm not a professional in that sense. So that just makes me wonder how did you <clears throat> I'm sorry, how did you go about writing the narration? Because it's about three years, right? So mm-hmm. things are happening. She's mm-hmm. traveling there. There is the plane crash and then mm-hmm. she's trying to get there. And then she gets there. Then she comes back. There is this back and forth. And mm-hmm. we have this sense of time. And uh, But did she, like, how did it happen? She said something on set, or not set, but she said something. And then at night in your hotel room, you wrote like, something yeah. that could yeah. echo this or answer this or it could be a reply to this or you had a bunch of ideas mm. already created and then you just interspersed them with mm. yeah the, the film uh i'm a kind of a person that very 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 much as i think most of the directors do read about the subject and think about it night and day even in dreams and so on and write a lot. I wrote a lot uh, about my thoughts during the three years, but uh, I never, the process of writing the narrator happened only when we were already editing. Ah, And uh, how we did was that I'm a, as you may have heard that I'm a very wordy woman. I talk a lot. So also my writing is very long. And uh, I had a very talented young Finnish uh, editor, Jussi Sand, who, who, who then, um, uh, with whom we wrote this together. I t- uh, he, uh, uh, either he said to me that he, he could be a part for um, um, this need, something like narrator to say something, or I, I saw that and I said, we need a narrator here. And then I said, I think uh, here we could talk about this and this idea because the, uh, I had these ideas I wanted to bring out, but we had to find them in the timeline. So it was merging during the editing. And uh, then Yossi said to me, well, well, go home and write this. <laughs> and I went home, I wrote, and then I came back to the editing room and he said, well, this is much too long, let's edit it. And so we, uh, we worked together, we wrote it together during the editing process uh, based on the uh, film that was uh, evolving on the timeline. So it it was a very, this kind of work, not that I would have written it in advance, but during the editing process as the film, film was when you getting its shape. A whole... Yeah, when it was getting its shape, yeah. 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 Uh, what did Hanela say when she saw it? Like, did she see? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, <laughs> of course, she has seen it. Well, she said that. Uh, well, it's there. Then she asked me to um, move one line, and I changed it. It was a uh, one sentence, and then she wanted me to correct her uh, you know, title of hers. 
and it was it. That was it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then any reactions? Like, did she like it? What do you think? She, uh, hard to tell. I don't know. I don't know. She said nothing. She said, it's there. And, but she's a scientist who wants to concentrate on her own work. I guess I don't know. The film was film. I don't know. I, it's hard, and I don't want to make any guesses because I don't know. I, what I know is that during the film, she said she loves everything in my previous films and she wants to see everything I do in the future. So if this is not okay, too much trust. different from my other films, then, so. then, then, then <laughs> you're... <laughs> okay, okay. But I, uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised that if she was... Um, Mm, bustled about it because it's very difficult to see oneself in those wide close-ups and uh, kind of in that kind of uh, moral debate or turmoil as you said so uh, I'm, I'm I'm not so proud so I'm surprised that she couldn't say anything because it's a, such a big when we, we yes when we go into the cinema and you see oneself yourself on the big screen so how about reactions from others I, 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 I'm, not, I, I'm not familiar with the Finnish audience's reaction. I guess that was the first time you showed it, or? Uh, yeah, this was a private screening for Hamile, mm -hmm. of course, but mm -hmm. this, has, uh, this have, uh, has had its um, cinema release in Finland, and the critics ha have been um, great, five stars. Or, or, yeah. and, um, Congratulations. Uh, thank you, and uh, I did... I did um, go on the tour with the film in some uh, cinemas and it was um, very nice to meet the audience face to face and um, yes it's been amazing they have said so <laughs> nice words and it's amazing to see the normal audience and to speak with them and how they feel and how they understand the film it's make it makes you very humble and um, yes um, it's been very nice what they have said but on the other hand who would who would say shitty things on your face? If you... <laughs> to your face, no one. <laughs> well, then uh, <clears throat> there is this interesting moment when towards the end of the research, uh, you can feel this emptiness and this kind of uh, misdirection when it turns out that there is this emulator thing that they want and she wants or an AI thing. So there is <clears throat> clearly a point when she seems to be disappointed or others <clears throat> Sorry. So there is this moment in, in the film where you sense this emptiness or misdirection when things don't go the way they should be going. And it's such, I, I, I was kind of happy to see that because this, this kind of showed the, the chaos part of, of uh, what you're talking about, how it's, it's nature and if you take it away. What, mm -hmm. what have we got? And it, it was mm -hmm. it, it was an interesting thing to see those millions of dollars uh, uh, placed here and there, but, but things are not going the way mm -hmm. uh, uh, people imagine that. So I, I weirdly found myself rooting for this thing to fail. It was, mm -hmm. it was an interesting reaction, like you're, mm -hmm. you're watching a game and it's like, um, she makes a very clear point of not wanting children. It's interesting how open she is talking about uh, I have the exact number of children I want to have which is zero mm -hmm. this is what she, she says in in the film and on the other hand at the end of the film you dedicate this film to your daughters and it struck me as again some kind of a not a balance maybe it's not the, the right word but some kind of an, an answer to that oh. line in the film and you say you dedicate this film to your three daughters, the generation that bears the consequences. Mm -hmm. And you show this woman who doesn't have children and doesn't want children. Mm -hmm. And it was just a very interesting I idea for me. It was, it, was it something- oh, that... Great, Some, uh, something I really never, I have, this is the first time I hear about this, but I love this idea. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. Maybe it was something in my subconscious. I have to say that, uh, uh, of course, this is the first time I ever dedicated anything to my daughters, 
whom I of, of course very much love. It, it came to my head during the editing process. But I think for me, um, uh, I got very seriously ill during the filmmaking and it wasn't a kind of a sure that I can make the film and it was a long struggle. So uh, I kind of thought at some point that if this is uh, the final kind of um, thing that I will do as a filmmaker, uh, I somehow want to dedicate it to my children, of course, because, uh, you know, I don't want to say <laughs> more about that, but that was my original yeah. idea. But when you say that, I can buy that. It's a great uh, interpretation. <laughs> It's, 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 it just struck me as, as I thought it was uh, not, not because of that, but I thought there was this conscious. Yeah, uh, great. Uh, Maybe line. my subconscious work. No, so. for sure. <laughs> and also, one more thing that you, that you dedicate the, the film to your daughters, the generation mm -hmm. that bears the, but not the generations to come. Mm -hmm. Is this mm -hmm. a pessimistic view of the end of the world as we know it? Like, the, mm. or it was just one generation you were thinking of. Mm. I, I thought about yes, you are right. <laughs> yes, uh, I love you because you are so very uh, sharp eyed. I thought about the S, but I wanted to leave it out. I don't know why. I cannot say you why, because maybe I felt it. Um, Pompous, because, uh, yeah, yeah, pompous also, and uh, maybe something that because I think we have to make the choices now, there will be no generations. Ah, <laughs> <If>, uh, <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, maybe I just give an explanation mm -hmm. afterwards. But I, for some reason, I wanted to leave the S out, I just said no S, and you did, yeah, I uh, know it made it, it landed. <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite part of the film? something that speaks to you that has like the most meaning the, the most meaningful scene from uh, the inside of making this film? yeah oh my god it's so difficult because of course there are very many meaningful moments and meaningful um uh, there are some, I know there are some because sometimes when it, oh, I always this is maybe maybe one of my I love many things in the film, but um, for some reason there is a moment where I always start to cry, almost, even if I've seen the film so many times. And it's when the rain comes, and um, <clears throat> I think uh, Christian did an amazing work with the uh, music and sound. And when the rain comes, it's just the one um, image. And when we move from there to the mosque where she is, and well where the narrator says you cannot control your life. So uh, somehow that is a very touching moment for me and somehow also something, it, I don't know. Yes, I love, but I love many things in the film. So that is for me something I always move when I watch, get moved. No, I, I, I really loved the, the different meta meta layers like when when you when you watch mm -hmm. it and you see yeah a bunch of scientists in an arabic country with the loads of loads of money in luxurious hotels and sushi and whatnot and and then you you have those uh, uh, questions and answers or rather questions to existential uh, uh, um, questions and it's it's just um yeah, it's very universal. But on the other hand, there, there is this sense of urgency that we have to do something because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, it needs, you know, there is a need of practicality and action. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful mix. So, yeah. Yes, yes. Thank you. I like, love you to hear you saying that because for me, this is uh, the, the science or the science film was only a frame the f framework of the film and I wanted to kind of uh, handle much more different things and also all these meta layers are very important for me so I paid a lot of and loads of uh, attention to that in the editing room with the editor. Are you familiar with the Kate Bush song Cloud Busting in the video? 
It's in the 80s and it's about a, a, a scientist father, her father, who is a cloud buster to make rain. Really? Yeah. I, know, well, I don't I know if Kate, you're I love, with Kate Bush, but oh, I love Kate she's Bush, my favorite. But, uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, then it's a must for you. Yeah, How to well, the cloud to... director? You, you have to. Do, you have to watch. The yeah, well, what is the title of the song? Cloud busting. Cloud busting. How on earth? Because I, 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 I don't know how it escaped <laughs> you. It's like <laughs> well, a video for you. This is so ridiculous because I. During the years, I watched so many paintings, painters, books, poems, music about clouds. I tried to find everything about clouds. And how come I haven't found Kate Bush's song? Mm. So I'm a bit humiliated. I'm, 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 I'm a bit shamed that I... No, no, no. Just <laughs> Thank watch, you for mentioning watch that. It, watch it. It's, uh, um, it's, well, it's just a nice uh, additional moving image uh, to, to yours. But, but yes, thank you very much. Uh, thank any, you. any future projects, anything, or you're just touring the world now? <laughs> well, to I, am, I am touring. I'm touring the world now, but uh, I do have some plans. But they are. Um, I'm a bit super, superstitious Secret. one. Yeah, I don't want to talk about them until they are sure. That, yeah. Yeah, that's. Let's hope I can still question. make one. <laughs> Not yeah. a silly question. All, thank you, Melanie. All, all the best to you. Thank all you the very best much to you. for the for the film. Thank you, and have a nice festival. You too. Thank, Thank you. you too, yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.